Okay guys, welcome to lesson 2C, Solving Inequality. Today our objective is, I can solve an inequality. We do have one key term, and that's the actual word inequality. You guys should know what this is. We've talked about it a little bit already. An algebraic relation showing that the value of one quantity or expression is not equal to the other. So what this tells us is our two sides are not equal. For example, x is greater than 9. y is less than 17. z is greater than or equal to 51. Or k is less than or equal to negative 10. These should look familiar to you. When solving inequalities, we are going to go ahead and solve them exactly like we would solve an equation. Our goal is to get our variable by itself on one side of the inequality symbol. The only thing that's different is this one rule. When we are either multiplying or dividing by a negative number, what we have to do is we have to make sure we go through and we flip the inequality symbol. Okay, so that's our rule. Only when we multiply or when we divide by a negative number. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a couple examples. If you look at example number one, here we are just going to go through and solve one step inequality. If you look at part A, we have x minus 3 is less than 1. What we want to do is we want to get x all by itself. So to move over, we need to add 3 to both sides in order to get x by itself, just like we would with an equation. On our left-hand side, x is now alone. Bring down your less than symbol, and 1 plus 3 gives me 4. So our answer here would be x is less than 4. Notice we did not have to flip our symbol because we did not do any multiplication or division. We just added. There's also a way that you can go through and check your solutions, just like we could with equations. The only difference now is this is telling us x can be any number that is less than 4. So let's take a look at a number line. Here we have the number 4. Any number less than that, that would include 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, and so on, going on and on and on. So we can pick any one of these numbers to test it. So I'm just going to pick 0. Okay, it doesn't matter which one you guys decide to pick. We plug it into our original equation. So instead of x, we have 0 minus 3 should be less than positive 1. Well, when we simplify, we have negative 3 is less than 1. So that is a true statement. We solved this inequality correctly. Let's look at example number 2. y plus 5 is greater than or equal to 7. Well, right away, you guys should be thinking we need to get y all alone, so we need to subtract 5 from both sides. When we do that, we are left with y is greater than or equal to 7 minus 5, which gives me 2. You guys could go ahead and check this as well. So any number that is 2 or larger will make your original inequality correct. Notice you can try that check by yourself. I'm not going to do the checks for all of them. We did not do any multiplication or division by a negative number, so we don't need to worry about flipping our sign. Let's take a look at example C. To get W by itself, we have that negative sign out in front. Remember, that's the same thing as having a negative 1 W. So what we need to do to get W by itself is we need to make sure we divide both sides by negative 1. On our left-hand side, we're left with w. On the right-hand side, 9 divided by negative 1 it gives me a negative 9. But now we have to come up to our rule. We just divided by negative 1. So instead of our inequality symbol being w with less than negative 9, this needs to flip to become w is greater than negative 9. Now the good news is, is, if you forgot to flip your symbol but you did your check, your statement would be false. So then you could look and go back and make sure you flip that symbol. All right, let's try and get on to a couple more complicated problems, okay? If we take a look at example two, now we have two-step inequality. 
Once again, we're solving these just like we would solve equations. We just need to make sure that we follow our rule. If we multiply or divide by a negative, we flip that symbol. So if you look at example 2, part A, we need to get x by itself. So first, we need to make sure we go ahead and add 3 to both sides. When we do that, we are left with 2x is greater than or equal to 10. Notice I don't change my symbol because we only added. And then to get x by itself, we divide by 2. So we have x is greater than or equal to 5. Notice, even though we divided here, we did not divide by a negative number. We divided by a positive 2. So we leave our sign the same. If we look at example 2, part B, now same idea, it's a two-step inequality. So just like you would solve your equation, we need to subtract 8 from both sides. We would be left with negative 3y is less than 32 minus 8, which gives me 24. Now, what we do notice, we need to get y all alone. So we need to go ahead and divide by that negative 3. On the left-hand side, we're just left with y. 24 divided by negative 3 gives me a negative 8. But what you guys should be thinking to yourselves is, wait a minute, we divided by a negative this time. So instead of our inequality symbol being less than, we know that y is going to be greater than negative 8. Watch out for that rule. All right, and on our next one, we now also need to talk about solving multi-step inequalities, okay? So remember, we need to look and see, just like in an equation, we have this 7 outside of our parentheses. We need to make sure that we go through and we distribute. So we start by 7 times x, or 7x. 7 times negative 3 gives me a negative 21, or minus 21 is greater than or equal to 56. Now it's just a two-step inequality. So we got to go ahead and add 21 to both sides. When we do that, we get 7x is greater than or equal to 56 plus 21, or 77. Notice we didn't flip our symbol. We only added. And to continue to solve, we divide both sides by 7 and get x is greater than or equal to 11. Once again, here, even though we divided, we divided by a positive number, so our symbol stays the same. Now, if you look at our last example, we now have y, our variable, on both sides of our inequality. We once again want to solve it just like an equation. The only difference is I would focus on getting all of your variables on the left-hand side because it makes our inequality easier to read. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start by subtracting 30y from both sides of the inequality. 20y minus 30y gives me a negative 10y minus 13 is less than 57. Notice we do not change our symbol because we just subtracted, not multiplication or division. We go ahead and we add 13 to both sides just like we would in an equation. And we're left with negative 10y is less than 70. Your last step, we need to divide both sides by negative 10. And when we do that, we get y is greater than negative 7. Remember, it's greater than because what we did, we divided by a negative this time. You have to flip your symbol. All right, so I need you guys to make sure you go ahead, fill out the bottom of your note sheet. What can you do after watching this video? What do you still not know how to? And to help yourself, what will you do?